Welcome to another instructional video from OWL, the wise choice in fiber optic test equipment. I'm Professor Jim Powers. This video will provide an overview of the OWL Trek OTDR and help users get familiar with the appearance and controls of this device. Upholding OWL's commitment to high quality yet affordable fiber optic test equipment, the OWLTREK OTDR enables fiber optic professionals to quickly and easily troubleshoot and locate optical faults in single mode fibers. The OWLTREK is truly a handheld unit, being one of the smallest OTDRs on the market today, yet having capabilities of other OTDRs costing thousands of dollars more. Optical fiber traces are displayed on a high resolution color LCD display which implements state-of-the-art MEMS technology to allow the OTDR's display to flip between portrait and landscape mode automatically simply by rotating the device 90 degrees. By flipping from portrait to landscape, the user sees a wider viewing area, displaying more trace information on the screen and allowing for greater viewing detail when zooming in on the OTDR trace. Important OTDR trace parameters such as pulse width, index of refraction, and data point averaging are fully user configurable and are accessible through an intuitive menu system. Up to 1,000 traces can be stored in the OWLTREX internal memory. Powering the OWLTREX is a rechargeable lithium polymer battery that allows for up to 20 continuous hours of normal usage. The OWLTREX is equally suited to testing single mode fibers in many different testing environments, including Telco, CATV, FTTH, WAN, MAN, LAN, Manufacturing, and Laboratories. Before we discuss the controls and appearance of the OWLTREK OTDR, it would be helpful to discuss the performance expectations of OTDRs in general, with an emphasis on the OWLTREK and its limitations as an entry-level device. There are two types of events detectable by an OTDR. Fresnel events are based upon light being reflected back towards the OTDR from reflective events and are thus very easy to see on an OTDR trace. Backscatter events, on the other hand, are based on the intrinsic properties of the optical fiber that scatter light back towards the OTDR. Backscattered light is much dimmer than reflected light, resulting in smaller events that are much harder to see on an OTDR trace. At any rate, the OWLTREK includes automatic event location and records detectable events in an event table. The main function of the OWLTREK OTDR is to detect the presence of highly reflective events, otherwise known as Fresnel events. Examples of Fresnel events are breaks, shatters, patch panels, or even the end of a fiber link. The location of a reflective event is shown as a visible spike on the otherwise gently sloping OTDR trace allowing the technician to quickly locate the problem and restore the network to its previously working state. By placing the cursors at the first and last reflective events, the OWL trek can also be used to determine the total end-to-end -end distance of the fiber link. It should be noted that the last reflective event is not guaranteed to be the actual end of the fiber for a couple of different reasons. Severe events such as breaks mid-span might prevent the OTDR from detecting other events beyond the break. Also, echoes or ghosts from previous highly reflective events might appear in the noise area of the OTDR trace beyond the actual end of the fiber. In either case, it is up to the technician to confirm the results shown on the OTDR trace. Placing the cursors at various points along the OTDR trace can also determine the length of individual segments of the fiber network. The OWLTREK can also detect and measure backscatter events on short to moderate length fiber links. Tweaking pulse width and averaging settings may enhance the OWLTREK's ability to detect backscatter events. However, even with optimal settings, some low loss backscatter events may not be detectable. Backscatter events are more difficult to measure and interpret than reflective events. Proper cursor placement is vital to the accurate measurement of backscatter events. It should be noted that only individuals with prior OTDR training and experience should attempt backscatter event measurement. Backscatter can also be used to measure the attenuation, or loss, of certain segments of an optical fiber link by placing the cursors at the beginning and end of the segment to be measured. 
If available, however, attenuation measurements taken with an optical power meter and light source always take precedence over OTDRs for end-to-end -end attenuation measurements. Before we begin, there are several safety and operational precautions that need to be addressed. First, never look into the connector port of any fiber optic test or transmission equipment, patch cable, fiber link, or other installed fiber. For your safety, always assume that active laser equipment is attached to optical fibers and is powered on. Second, do not run a test with the OTDR unless there is a launch cable or dead zone box attached to the OTDR port. Concerning electrical safety, only use approved battery charges for charging this device. Use of unapproved chargers could cause damage to the device or harm to the user from fire and electrical shock. Keep connector ferrules and optical ports clean to prevent damage to the OTDR port. Failure to properly clean and maintain the OTDR port could cause permanent damage to the internal OTDR optics and could result in costly repairs. For best results, always replace the dust caps after each use and do not insert angled physical contact, or APC, connectors into the OTDR port. There are no user serviceable parts in the Owltrek OTDR. Attempts to service or repair this product by unauthorized personnel will void the product warranty. At the top of the Owltrek OTDR are four ports. The left-hand port contains the integrated visual fault locator port. This port is 2.5 millimeter universal which means it can connect to any connector using a 2.5 millimeter ferrule, such as ST, SC, or FC. The USB port is used to download test results from the OTDR to the PC for trace analysis, storage, and printing, as well as charge the internal lithium polymer battery when used with an approved battery charger. The SC UPC port on the right is the OTDR port and connects the OTDR to the fiber under test. For best results, do not connect the link under test directly to the OTDR port. Rather, it is recommended to use launch cables or a dead zone box to connect the OTDR to the fiber under test. OTDR functions are controlled through a 10 button keypad. Each of the four yellow menu buttons activates the menu option located directly above the corresponding button. Four navigation buttons move cursors or menu options in the direction of the button as well as zooming or panning the OTDR trace screen. The power button powers the OTDR on or off. Additional functions use the power button as well, such as accessing the help menu or returning to the main trace screen. A power symbol will appear next to these additional functions. The enter button toggles between the various menus at the bottom of the trace screen and also activates some menu options while in the menu system. The trace screen on the OTDR contains several areas of pertinent information. The fiber ID displays the name of the currently loaded trace. Test mode shows which mode of operation is currently being used. VFL status shows the status of the VFL port. Zoom mode shows whether horizontal, or vertical zoom mode is selected. Battery indicator shows the remaining battery life. The trace viewing area displays the results of the OTDR trace which users can zoom in on for more detailed trace analysis. Trace information is located below the trace viewing area and displays the relative position and power levels at and between the red and green cursors. The Function Options menu displays on-screen menu options. The Enter key toggles between multiple menus. Finally, there are two LEDs located above the LCD display. The Charging Status LED is on the left and will be lit when connected to a battery charger. The LED will change color based upon the battery charging status. When the LED is green, the battery is fully charged. When the LED is orange, the battery is charging. When the LED is red, there is a problem with the battery and or battery charger and you must contact OWL support for service. The standby status LED on the right will blink green when the OTDR is active 
and will blink red when the OTDR is in standby. While in standby, pressing any key will wake up the OTDR. This has been another instructional video from OWL, the wise choice in fiber optic test equipment. For more information about additional instructional videos or OWL fiber optic test equipment in general, please visit OWL's website at owl-inc.com. I'm Professor Jim Powers. Thanks for watching.